Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the AGLRC Forward FD65A 65 Ampere BLL32 4 in 1 ESC. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and in the next few days I'm going to feature it in a build video. The FD65A 4 in 1 ESC is available in a couple of options. First of all, you can get it on its own and you can also get it in combination with the Ford FD Dual Gyro Flat Controller, which I've already reviewed, and also with the HRC Ford VTX, which I have reviewed as well. Here is everything that you are getting along with the 4-in-1 ESC. So first of all, you're getting some stickers, a 1000 microfarad 35 volts capacitor, a bag with rubber dumpers, spacers and screws, a small wiring diagram, a high quality AMAS XT60 battery connector, along with two 10 cm long 12 AWG battery leads. And finally, you're also getting a harness for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC with the flight controller, and it works perfectly without any modifications with the Ford F7 flight controller. In terms of specs, the FD65A supports LiPo batteries between three to six cells. It's using BLA 32 firmware, and its constant current per motor is 65 ampere, with a peak current for five seconds of 75 ampere. In addition, it weighs 23.8 grams, and its outer dimensions are 46.5 by 45 by 5.9 millimeters. Now, I still haven't tested the FD65A, but I can tell you that at the first glance, its quality looks pretty good. It features big pads for the motors and for the battery, and you can find them on the bottom and on the top. And in addition to the 8 pins connector that connects the 4 in 1 AC with the flat controller, you can also find soldering pads on the bottom, so it adds some redundancy, which is great, in case the connector is going to break. Now I'm going to get to the most important aspect of this video, especially if you're going to get this 4-in-1 ESC. You should note that the heatsink is made out of metal and it's only covered with a sticker. And if I'm going to bridge the metal casing and the ground, you're going to hear this beep that indicates that a short circuit has been made. So you should pay extra attention and you should not bridge the battery plus with the metal casing because otherwise you're going to fry this 4-in-1 ESC. I talked to AGLRC about this issue and I don't think that it's a deal breaker but it's still something that you should be aware of because for example when I built the SpeedDB quadcopter I accidentally bridged the battery plus and the casing and I always recommend to check your build using a multimeter because it's going to prevent you from accidentally burning your stuff. In the build video of the SpeedDB frame, I used the FD65A 4-in-1 ESC and also the Ford F7 flat controller, which I've used before and I have a very good experience using it. The build and flight video of the SpeedDB frame is going to be pretty interesting, at least in my opinion, since for the first time I'm going to use the Furious FEV 2.4 GHz VTX and also the Furious FEV TrueDX 2.4 GHz receiver, which I've just received. So stay tuned for the build and flight video. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.